Those are just imaging detectors. That's what we've talked about so far, imaging detectors, if you want to make a picture. Now let's talk about spectrographs. A spectrograph is a combination of two elements. You need a disperser and you need a detector. The detectors are the same as what we just talked about. You can use photographic plates. Nowadays we use CCDs. But to get a spectrum you need to disperse the light. And the thing that we've talked about the most is a prism. So everyone's familiar with the prism and it has dispersing properties. So here we have light. In this case it's going through cool gas, so we're going to get an absorption spectrum. We take that light and we put it through a slit. So we just have one line of light hitting our prism. And that line of light is divided into many different lines of light, uh, depending on the wavelength, where the red gets refracted the least and the blue gets refracted the most, so you get a spread. The red gets put over here, the blue over here, and then you stick a detector. Again, a CCD will do, a photographic plate, it will do. Now, here it's shown in color, but as I said, our detectors are not color detectors, so when we get a spectrum, we just have to remember that the red's on the left and the blue's on the right. Well, in this case, it's reversed. Right? The red's on one side, the blue's on the other side, but the CCD detects it in black and white. So you get a continuum of emission, and here you see a different types of absorption lines having to do with iron and chromium and some other things in different states of ionization. So you just kind of have to remember which wavelength is where. There are ways you can check it using the same kinds of element lamps that I brought in before. As we talk about spectroscopy is where we learn all of our physics, and this is how we actually detect it. Now, prism is not a good disperser. It's very inefficient. You lose a good chunk of the light going in there. Just like a photographic plate, not very efficient. Most of the light doesn't register a response. Here, a lot of it gets scattered out in directions you don't want. So we, we never really use prisms in spectrographs nowadays. We use a variety of different things. Uh, one example is a grating. There are all sorts of different types of gratings. That's what you all had in your hands. Here's one. Remember these that we passed out? Pull up to the light and the colors are dispersed. That thing right there. Um, that's an example of a transmission grating. So there are all sorts of different types. Remember the case of the two-slit experiment, where you send the light through and you get an interference pattern on the wall. This is the same thing that grade is. It's not two slits. It's a whole bunch of slits right next to each other. It's kind of like a polarizer. Now you have a manufacturing process that gives you these openings side by side by side by side, something very close to openings, etchings. And the light goes through. It interferes with itself. One thing we didn't talk about here, when we had this before, this is like one wavelength of light. But if you send many different wavelengths of light through, you get a different spread of your interference pattern. So in the center, at center bit of light, all colors land there, so it comes out white again. But this next band, called first order, it's wider uh, for red light, not as wide for blue light. It's just a property of how light interferes. The interference pattern you get depends upon the wavelength of the light, so you get separation. And when you were looking through your gradings, you were actually looking at this order here. It's designed so you can zoom in on this part. So it's using interference, it's zeroing in on one of the interference lines, but there's a chromatic effect, it's separated in color, and so you get a little mini spectrum there. You can see how much red, how much blue, if there are any absorption lines. So that's the basic idea behind a grading. Very efficient, much more efficient than a prism. You've all looked through one of these, so I'm not going to pass those out again. And the way these are really made, these transmission gratings, there aren't actual holes. There aren't actual slits, but they're like cap slits. Uh, the manufacturing process etches out little indentations and basically works the same way. You have some regions where you don't have to pass through much plastic and other regions where you have to pass through a lot and basically sets up an interference pattern. Zero the order here is first order dispersed. But there are other ways to do it. You can do a VPH grading. So you have transmission. So in terms of transmission gratings, you have relief and you have VPH. Technically, that stands for volume phase holographic. It's a new technology. Very, very efficient. It's the most efficient way that you can make a grading. 
UNC is one of the world leaders. Professor Chris Clemens uh, over in Phillips Hall has a lab. He's one of the world leaders in this technology. And he let me have one of the gradings here. Actually, he didn't. I just went down to his lab and took it. <laughs> then I was walking to class with it in my hand, and he caught me, but it's okay. He said, you took a crappy one. Let me get you a better one. But he never got me a better one. Okay, i got to be careful not to touch it, because since it is a... Yeah, kind of hold it by the edge. Basically, the way this is made is there's a film of some type, some special type of film applied to it, and they use lasers, and with an interference pattern on the film, they're changing the index of refraction. So the little lines are not etched in there like a relief grating, but you're actually changing the index of refraction, the density, essentially, of a substance on the surface of this piece of glass. And it will have the same property. I already see the pattern, but let's see if I... you all see colors? Yeah? I can't see what you see. I, I could be holding it backwards. So. But our I don't know if it matters. You still see colors? No? So it does matter. You see colors now? Okay. Did that work? Do you all see colors? No? Oh, they're colors. There we go. <laughs> they're the colors. Okay. Very, very efficient. Like 98, 99% efficient. No lights being lost. And so, again, it makes your telescope like it's bigger. Suppose you have a telescope, a 4 meter telescope, and before you're using a gradient that lost 50% of the light. Now, you have 100% of light, so it's like you built a bigger telescope. Building a bigger telescope costs tens of millions of extra dollars, but here in the lab, we can just play with glass and film and very inexpensively get a lot more productivity out of your telescope. Here's another one. I brought a slide just in case I couldn't figure it out, but there's the idea. That's what I was trying to do. And you also have reflection gratings. the opposite of transmission. We've got transmission on the, the right there. There's a relief grating. And here we have reflection. Same idea. You just etch into it and you bounce the light off of it. What comes off will also be an interference pattern where the first order will be dispersed throughout the colors. Good example of that is a CD. There's one. These aren't meant to be gratings, but they work the same way. You have all the little lines and grooves that have been etched into it, and so you shine light off it, and you should get a color dispersion. In fact, you can see it here. I don't even have to use the flashlight. This is not meant to be a spectrographic disperser, but you have all the little grooves in here where the information is stored, and so when you shine light off this, it will have a dispersive effect. You can see green on this side, red down here. As I tilt it, you know, you can see the color effects at different places. So sometimes you see those as well. So again, those aren't designed to be reflective grains, but they act in the same way, and often they're, they're used in telescopes for various things. Okay. Questions about detectors or spectrographs or anything? 